In this video, we are going to make a 3D model of the car that we sketched out on paper. The end result will be something like this. Our final result won't have the wheels modeled. These wheels are just placeholders. To get started, we need to open the car block template. To do that, we go to File, Open, and then make sure we are looking in our Downloads folder. We can do that with the Look In. Click the drop down arrow and click Downloads. We should see our car plot block template that we downloaded earlier. Click it and then click open. This is the block that we are going to continue to modify. Our first step is to draw the side profile on the car. But before we do that, let's try navigating around this interface a little bit so that we are a little more comfortable with it. The first thing I'd like to point out is this navigation cube in the top right corner. We can click on the navigation cube, and if we click and hold, we can drag it and look around our model. We can also click on a surface, like the word front here, and it will do an animation and then focus in on that surface. We can also move around by clicking this hand, grabbing the screen, and moving it where we want it to go. When we're done with the hand, we can either hit the escape key or click the hand again to turn off that tool. A shortcut is to push the middle mouse button in to grab the screen and then move it. Did you know the middle mouse wheel is also a button? If we are too zoomed in, we can use the mouse wheel to zoom out. Try scrolling the mouse wheel. Does it feel a little bit weird? You got to put the mouse where you want to zoom in or out of. If I want to zoom in on this axle hole, I need to put the mouse on it before scrolling in. And then that will be in the middle of my screen. Now it is time to start our sketch for our side profile. We want the front to be facing us. Do you see on the navigation cube how it says the word front? Click and drag it if you don't see it. Once you see the word front, you can click it. It will make an animation. Now, if the word front on the cube is not reading the right side up, we can rotate it by clicking these left and right arrows. Now that the word front on the navigation cube is facing the right direction, we are ready to start our 2D sketch. Go up to the top left and click Start 2D Sketch, and then click the surface that is facing us. This will play a small animation, letting us know that we are now in our sketch. If the sketch is not in the middle and that bothers you, remember we can always rearrange our model by clicking that middle mouse wheel in to grab the screen, holding it, and then moving the mouse. I'm going to draw a helper rectangle around the block. This rectangle is going to make sure that I have a closed shape when I'm done drawing all of my lines. I click the rectangle tool, and then I'm going to click the top left corner of my rectangle once and then release the mouse. I can then move the mouse. Notice how a rectangle follows me around as I move the mouse. I'm going to place my cursor in the bottom right hand corner and click again. I have now placed a rectangle that will perfectly match the block that we started off with. Now it's time to transfer my drawing that I made in an earlier step into this. I can use the line tool uh, by clicking it and then clicking where I want the line to start. If I click and then release the mouse and then move it, you'll notice a line follows my cursor. When I want to place the next point of my line, I click again. I can repeat this step to make the rough shape of my model. If lines are not good enough and I need a curve, I can try using the arc tool. The arc tool works similarly to the line tool. Click to select the arc tool. Place one end of your arc with a left click, and then you place the other end of the arc with another left click. When you start moving your mouse, that's when you'll see the arc appear. If you are happy with your arc, click one more time to finish and lock the arc into place. If you are ever in a tool and you are unhappy with what it's doing, 
for example, you were not happy where you placed one side of your arc, we can escape that tool by hitting the escape key. The escape key is in the top left corner of our keyboard. But that will exit our tool, and if we want to draw an arc again, we'll have to click that again. You can use any combination of line and arc to draw your shape. Just make sure that the endpoints of an arc and a line are the same so that you get your closed shape. Now that I've drawn the shape of my car, it is time to hit finish sketch. When I hit finish sketch, it will play a small animation and that will take us back out of our sketch. I'm going to click and drag on the cube to see that this drawing is only on the one side. It is now time to take our drawing 3D. To do that, I click the extrude button. When I click extrude, it doesn't know what I want. It cannot read my mind. I need to select everything that I want to make 3D. In this case, you need to click the parts of the car that you want to keep. So if this is the shape that I want to keep, it's what I click. Now it's a bit tough to tell what is happening. So I'm going to click the navigation cube and view this from a slightly different angle. Here you can see the shape that I selected is being extruded out. I can add to that by clicking additional closed shapes. That looks pretty good, but this isn't what I wanted. What I actually want is this to remove everything that I didn't draw. And to do that, I can use this Boolean command. Boolean means to combine, and we want to use the intersect. I clicked the intersect, and you can see it got rid of all of the block except for just this little bit. But there's an issue. I need this extrusion to go all the way through. I'm going to click and drag on the end of the arrow and you can see that the extrusion distance will follow my cursor. It's okay to extend beyond the block, it just won't exist afterwards. I'm going to hit OK and that will finish my extrusion. Next up, it's time to draw our top or bottom profile. To do that, I need to see the bottom of our model. I am going to click on the navigation cube and use that to look at the bottom. I don't need a perfectly straight on view, I just need to be able to see it. Then I'm going to click Start 2D Sketch and then click the bottom. It will play an animation and that will give me the perfect view. Remember, if your model is not exactly where you want it, you can reposition it by pushing and holding the middle mouse button. And if you are zoomed out too far or zoomed in too far, you could always scroll the mouse wheel to adjust it. Just make sure your mouse is on the important part of your drawing so you're not zooming in on an empty corner. Now it's time to draw two more helper rectangles. We are going to select the rectangle tool and click the top left corner of our block and then the bottom right corner of our block. This first helper rectangle is going to make sure that we have a closed shape at the end of this. The next helper rectangle I'm going to make needs to be half that size. And that's very easy to do in Inventor. I am again going to click the top left corner and then I'm going to put my mouse over onto the far right side and move it up and down. Notice how the rectangle snaps to the right side. And then notice how it goes from having a yellow cursor to having a green one when it snaps again, this time to the middle. Once I have that green cursor and it's in the middle, I can click and we can be certain that our second helper rectangle is perfectly half the size of our first one. With those two helper rectangles made, it is now time to draw our shapes. We're gonna be transferring the shapes that we drew originally. I'm going to use the line tool to make some cool shapes. Excellent. Now that I have made a brand new closed shape with the help of my two helper rectangles, I can hit finish sketch. Now that I have a new closed shape, thanks to the, those two helper rectangles, it is time to use the mirror tool. The mirror tool will make it so that we don't have to repeat our design on each side. 
To use the mirror tool, I come up and I select the mirror tool. This will open a new window. Notice how there is a blue glowing clicker next to the word select. That means it is ready for us to select the lines we would want to mirror. I'm going to select all the lines. Notice how it goes from purple to blue when I click on it. That means that line is now selected. Select all the lines you wish to mirror to the other side. Now we need to select our mirror line. Click mirror line. Select the line that cuts your model in half. It will also turn blue once it's selected. Click apply. Notice how it made a perfect mirror copy of what we drew on the other side. Notice all these gray symbols that appeared. We don't need to worry about them. They're just inventor giving us information that these were related in a mirror operation. We can hit done. Now that we have completed our mirror, we can hit finish sketch. We need to now take our 2D drawing and bring it 3D. So we can come up and hit extrude. We are going to select the parts of our model that we want to extrude. In this case, that is the inside of both of these. Now, again, it can't read my mind, so it's doing the wrong thing. It's extruding. I really want that Boolean intersect. So under Boolean, I'm going to select the one that says intersect. I need to make sure I have both of my mirror halves selected. This point, I only have one half, so I'm going to select my other half. Once I am certain that I have everything selected and that my intersection is going all the way through, you can see mine here is going much further than it needs to. I can hit OK. There is my completed 3D model of my car. Now that we are done modeling it, we need to save it and give it a good name. To save it with a new name, we need to hit File, Save As, and name it something useful. For example, we could call it Your Name's Car. And hit Save. You are now ready for the next step in which we will make a blueprint which will be very useful in making the car in real life.